for this type of bass sound, I want to start with a really rich sound because there is going to be a lot of filter movement and filtering involved. So I need a really full sound that I can cut stuff away from. So this is the default preset in Vital, and I'm actually just going to activate the other two oscillators. And one of them I'm going to use for width. So I'm just going to increase the voices here and give it a bit of detune. With the third one, I'm going to create a bit of movement by modulating the phase here. So we can just drag LFO1 on this. This gives it a bit of movement. The first one is going to be the steady one where I'm not going to do anything. If you've seen some of my other videos, I like to cut the highs and then distort it afterwards. So this is what I'm going to do here as well. So just make sure to route all oscillators to this filter and then just cut the highs. And then we can already head over to the effects section and enable the compressor and enable the distortion. We can just pretty much push this to the maximum here. I also like using a bit of EQ in front of the distortion to push certain frequencies in there. So now we have quite a bit of movement because of the detuning um, and the distortion. So at this point, I would already just resample this. So we can actually just create a MIDI clip, maybe make this two bars long and let's choose an E and then just record this. Now I'm going to re-import this into Vital. If you're using Ableton, then someone mentioned this in the comments on one of my videos. You can just crop the clip and then you can just directly drag it into Vital. I'm going to duplicate this instance of Vital and then just deactivate the oscillators here and just drag the sample that we just created into the sampler here. And it's also going through the same effects as before. And now we can start creating some additional movement. Just use an LFO on the filter cut. We can also make this a bit more random and slow it down. Maybe also something here with the gain because we don't need the same low end boost. And I also want to cut something here. So, so maybe grab LFO uh, 3 here. And just put it on the cutoff first. A bit like this. And then maybe grab LFO2 again and put this on the gain. And I don't want to boost too much. I just want to reduce it a bit. So that's okay. We can actually just continue doing with what we did before and just resample this. And again, we're going to duplicate our instance of Vital. We don't need this one anymore. Crop this clip and then just re-import it into the sampler. So let's see how this sounds, because now it's the third time it's running through all the effects. Yeah, maybe reduce the resonance on this one. Maybe also use this filter here. Actually, this blend function is really great where you can blend between different filter types. Let's have a go all the way. And we also don't need it on all the time. So the mix button here is really great as well. So let's just use one of these LFOs, maybe LFO2, and just have this one uh, modulate the mix button. Bounce this. Put all the resampled bases on one track, quickly gain match them a bit. And then I will consolidate this. So I have one long file with um, my three different variations. And at this point, I would most likely start using a sampler. I would use the Ableton internal sampler. So I'm just going to drag this down here. And this is where we are going to create our one shots. So if you play a C3 here, we play the sample at the original pitch. So I'm just going to increase the volume a bit because I want to sort of cycle through this a bit easier. In Ableton, there's a really convenient way to do this. If you go to the MIDI tab in the sampler and you can actually map the sample offset through the velocity and also set the amount to 100%. And now depending on the velocity here, the sample is going to start at a different place. So at velocity one, it's going to start at the beginning. 
create some MIDI notes like this with the original pitch of the sample and then start processing this a bit more. And no matter what, what kind of DAW you're using, I'm just going to be using an EQ mainly for the movement and also some compression and distortion. So let's just maybe use our glue compressor and the saturator. And we can already put a limiter at the end. Now I want to create movement with this EQ. Something like this. And I'm just gonna record this movement. I'm also gonna choose different velocities here. I don't really like this last one, so maybe, I don't know. Yeah, this is already better. Push this into the soft clipper here. And I'm also going to use the drive here already. I'm just going to try to gamage this a bit, so we aren't fooled by the louder signal. Yeah, this is too much already. And actually, I want a second EQ here and create some more movement, maybe more in the low end. Maybe something like this could work. Let's see. Yeah, something like this. Maybe we can also push this a bit into the limiter. And then just bounce this to all. We can actually deactivate these two for now. So this is the first EQ chain. And then we can just copy this over here. And now we are going to create a bunch of different variations. Cool thing about using a sampler is that you can also just use different MIDI notes at different pitches. So the sample is played faster. And this way you can also get more interesting variations and also choose a different velocity in my case, different starting points for the sample. And this time I'm going to combine it with pitch bends as well. So again, if you're using a sampler and you're pitch bending the sample, then it's also getting played faster or slower, depending on whether you're increasing the pitch or decreasing it. Just randomly drawing in pitch movements here. Small movements along with filter automation can actually go a long way. So now we have this without any filters. <laughs> So let's actually again use some EQs. Yeah, maybe something like this again. Again, use the second one. Let's try this. Something that also works kind of well for this is using a tremolo effect. So I'm just going to use auto pen enable and just create some more movement. And I'm also going to automate the amount of this because I don't want this uh, tremolo effect to be going on all the time. So. So at the end of something like this, I would just consolidate all of this to one long file again, just so it's easier to work with afterwards. And how I would actually use this in a more cinematic context or a more trailer sound effects context. I'm just going to grab a few examples. Maybe I'll just start with a Wushet. Something very simple like this. Lower the volume a bit. Now grab some other stuff just to have a few more layers. Just Reverse this and just take the beginning or ending portion of this. So we have something that fades in here. Maybe something on top of this. Maybe pitch it up. Maybe also use a boom. Decrease the volume just so we have a low end tail on this and fade it in because we don't need the attack of the boom here. I think I'm gonna add one more sample for the fade in here. Yeah, something like this. And I'm gonna take a small portion of it, pitch this down quite a bit so that we get this kind of texture. Actually make both of these a bit longer and maybe have them pan around a bit. Let's have this one come in from the left, this one come in from the right. 
pages in a bit more. Just reject this file down here. And if you're using a button, then there's a really cool way for this because I have a really long file and I just quickly want to go through a different section of this. So if you enable the loop section here and actually deactivate the grid, you can just go through the sample like this. There are different ways to do this in a button, but I usually do it like this. So I'm just going to create a short fade in here. Maybe also fade out here. And then we can just look for cool sounding parts. Probably would also put a reverb on this. Definitely want a high cut here. Disable everything else. Increase the decay time. Also, I think it's so loud. Let's just do it like this. And now you can just play around with So something like this already sounds cool. Let's actually just group this together and I'm gonna do some mild processing on this. Let's use a limiter as well. Actually, it's still too loud. Now you can also just duplicate this and mute this one and then just look for different parts here. You can also duplicate this and then layer different parts of this together. And you can also pitch this around. Yeah, something like this. So. 